in today's society like playing oh God, you, you know yeah. trying to get sympathy for being like you know having everything just to justify his his uh, actions yeah. or, or men horrible men's uh, actions for why they do what they do and she even says she's like well at least you had the decency to uh, to make sure I was awake um, and then you stuck your fingers inside me or whatever and she's like most guys like they try to have sex with me while they think like that I'm asleep or whatever that I've yeah. you know or I've blacked out so you have that going for you and he's just like I don't know he's just it's funny and it's real it, it, it's a it's a real thing like when a when a man is called out when a woman calls out a man for on you know calls him out on their shit they immediately they turn the other cheek and they're like whatever bitch like wh you know what i mean yeah. like you're you're ain't shit anyway they immediately and that's what these guys do they're like oh you know like i think you should leave now or <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you know, it, and that's the that's a real thing that happens. They think of it as, I guess, just rejection, not that they were prowling and doing something that's how do you say, you know, just uh, despicable behavior. Yeah, yeah, that was pretty bad. Or when he tries to get her to do the coke, Christopher. Christopher's character, <laughs> oh, and she yeah. like, and she blows it out. <laughs> he's like, "Well, that didn't work." Like, he's like, he gets on his finger and kind of rubs it, like rubs it on her gums. And she's just looking at him with these like this death stare. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god, that was. Uh, he plays such a good like creep, like weirdo. Yeah, that's another one that goes against the casting him. For this against type you know because we know him as like mclovin or all these goofy yeah. characters that are even red mist like these kind of unconventional funny nerdy uh people you know what i mean and um and they just cast them as these creepers and they do such yeah. a such a such a good job i think that's that's something that really stands out in in this movie is they're uh intentional casting of all of these good good guys in Hollywood and you know pitching them as something different and them actually really selling it you know what I mean with what's mm -hmm. Adam Brody you know when he like they're sitting on his couch and he starts making out with her and she's literally not reciprocating at all and he's just like oh my god that was so good or whatever you just <laughs> oh man it's oh, insane man. <laughs> And no, you know, I'm laughing because it's uncomfortable. It's not funny, but it's just. It, it's, no, yeah, it, it's, yeah. This, uh, I think, this movie is uh, extremely. I want to say it. It might be, um, uh, kind of like underlooked, uh, especially because of the way it came out uh, during the like basically the middle of uh, COVID when everything was uh, you know going crazy. Yeah. Um, not a lot of people. Not a lot of people are aware of this film. And uh, hopefully, uh, you know, uh, us uh, doing, hopefully we're doing our job and, and letting people, uh, or giving people a chance to, to watch this and, 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 and get to enjoy this like we, uh, like we did. Yeah, yeah. And thank you for, for watching it, man, or, or taking the time out um, to check it out. I know it was your first, your first watch, right? Yes, yes, definitely. Yeah, my first time watching it, so it was really, uh, it was really fun to, to watch this one, especially a movie I really haven't uh, seen before. So it was pretty cool. Did you go into it blind? You you didn't you didn't really know, besides the pitch that I gave you on the last episode, you didn't know much about it. No, yeah, yeah, I went into it pretty much blind. I think I had I might have seen part of a trailer during uh, on television, but I. I remembered nothing about it, really. Um, so it was it, it was definitely a uh, a fresh watch for me. And this was your what your probably your like third or fourth time watching this. I think I've seen it maybe six or seven times, to be honest. Oh, nice. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Dang. It's, it's it's safe to assume that uh, that you enjoyed this movie. I do, I do. Just because it's so. Um, <laughs> Well, you know me, I like um, 
definitely like revenge films. Um, yes. All different types. And this is something where it's just like they took huge chances, you know, mm-hmm. in a lot of different ways. And it's speaking on, especially for it to come out in the time where there's, you know, there's a kind of this uprising and, and, and you know, more and more women are speaking out against uh, different things. Uh, I think it's, you know, it's relevant. It's shocking. Um, and uh, I would say it should be empowering for a, a lot of people, you know? Yeah, it, it, it's for how relevant this is, like you said, I, it, it it's kind of weird, like I said, that it's kind of underlooked that not too many people know about it. Especially how relevant, like like you said, how relevant this film is, and it's um, you know it's it's present, it's set in the present time, so um, it makes sense. I, I it, what I'm trying to get to, like you know, it it's extremely relevant for this time that we're in right now, especially everything that's been going on within the last couple of years, like the you know the Me Too movement stuff like that. That everything that's that's I think if this would came out back then it would have been huge yeah yeah no yeah yeah i totally agree is that it's i think it just got kind of overshadowed with the with the time uh yeah with with its its release time which is um it's sad but also i think that you know this is going to age gracefully because it feels very much even though it's contemporary like it could be a timeless cult classic you know what i mean oh yeah i don't see this really being dated or or um you know not being relevant so many years down the line i'm I'm sure i mean i I guess we would we would hope as men that you know things could change enough that kind of shit will go yeah go away go away and they'd be like whoa i can't believe that that you know that's where society was back then um so yeah i'll say that with uh, as you and i being men who i i would say were pretty decent i hope <laughs> um oh, yeah yeah that uh um, i'd like to think i am so <laughs> yeah um i don't know interesting interesting film do you have it's it, it's pretty scary to be a woman in i mean in, in the world in general and that's one of my like my fear was to have a daughter to be brought up in this world because I know how horrible people are because you see it all the time. And uh, not saying that you know that those same type of things can't happen to a to a, a boy or a, a male, but um, it's women are so underlooked and and in that type of situation. So it is uh, it is extremely scary for me or to in general for me, for anyone to have you know. Uh, uh, little girls that you know grow up you know to to hopefully never be in those situations yeah speaking on that um i think pretty much all of the way i'm i'm a i'm a, a, a male who is pretty much raised by women all women pretty much right mm-hmm. and every woman i think in my immediate family has been in some way assaulted whether it be oh, yeah. yeah physically or or sexually and and that's the sad thing that people I feel like they want to sweep it under the rug or it makes them uncomfortable so they don't want to talk about it but that's you know and 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 that changes somebody especially mm-hmm. women and their and and their future and their career path and you know how they view themselves or you know and then you have all this these thing, these underlining conditions that happen like body dysmorphia or you know and I think in a lot of ways, I think that's why this film resonated with me so much because I'm able to yeah. connect with it on that level, um, having so many women uh, close to me. You know what I mean? It's like uh, I feel like we kind of grew up in the same type of um, same upbringing, if you will. Uh, you know, um, pretty much. I just had my well, I had my my mom and my uh, my grandma. And uh, and when my grandpa was was around, of course, but um, but primarily, you know, 
being raised was with my mom as a, as a single parent. So I totally get you on that. So going back to the film, what, uh, what, um, what kind of rating would you give this? Ooh, I have to give this like a nine for me. This was a, a highly entertaining film and, uh, I would definitely watch it again and I would definitely recommend it to anyone who hasn't seen it. So, um, for me, this was something that I had never seen before. Nothing like this. So I think uh, it deserves a nine for for what it did for me. I think it was a really interesting film, uh, interesting revenge film for them to, to, especially for them to end it the way they did. And I, I really commend them for for going that route instead of uh, the you know the traditional uh, way you would think a revenge film would go. Yeah. For me, there's a there's not much I would change. I think the 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 meticulous you know plot is thought out. It just it works on every every layer for me. Um, the performances mm-hmm. are great. Um, the the kind of dark humor throughout the uncomfortable humor works really well. The soundtrack is in, is incredible. I actually have a the vinyl. It, it's on. I have the the soundtrack on vinyl actually. Oh, nice. Yeah, <laughs> which is funny because of what what most of the tracks are, but it really works for the context of the movie. Um, I'm gonna say that this for me this is a perfect revenge film. Is it's a ten. Oh, nice. Okay. Sweet. And for it to come out in, in such an unconventional time, you know, 2020, a really kind of fucked up year, I think it was, uh, um, besides Sound of Metal, I think it was my very, like, my favorite film of last year, to be honest. Yeah, it's okay, yeah. Oh, yeah, Sound of Metal was great, too. Yeah. Holy shit, what a movie that is. <laughs> I, uh, speaking of, I don't know if we recorded it or not, but CJ, uh... Uh, you know, CJ's been on the show, and he's and he's been you know a friend of mine for a few years, or a friend of ours, I should say. Um, yeah. He was like, yeah, when I when I saw Sound of Metal, I immediately thought of you, Wesley, and I was like, man, Wesley's probably over there like jerking himself off to this movie. It's so <laughs> <laughs> he's like, this is a you oh, movie. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And um, that was very flattering for somebody to. Um, you know, to to relate something like that, especially have it be so good, and it you know it does resonate with me, and it, it complements what what I'm into. For somebody to understand that or comprehend that is yeah, is is cool. You know, anything else you want to dive in uh, for this movie? But I, I love the cast in this. Even even uh, you know everyone that has like even the people who have small parts who are only in there, you know, only have like 15 or five minutes of, of screen time. Um, I think everyone in this shines in their own way. I think um, it was well, very well directed. And, and I love the, the, just the way everything looked in this. Yeah. Yeah. The, the way everything is composed and even just Cassie's house is so weird and, and funny you know, like when um, when Alison Brie comes in, you know, after the whole the shit ha- has happened, after she sets her character up and she comes in and she wants to know what happened, you know, and then she's going to give Cassie the the phone. You just get this great shot of, of Cassie's living room. And there's just like this big old school dog painting and, you know, like yeah. w- weird wallpaper and weird furnishings and lamps and it's like very like kind of victorian style and you're just like what is what is going on here you know it's very striking yeah. it's striking the way that like nicholas winding reffin style is where you're just like this is so insane <laughs> yes definitely yeah i totally agree with that Swan um, so the first one, Carrie Mulligan actually refused to have a body double for her death scene. So a lot of training for her and her co-star Lowell uh, was needed to pull off an effective and safe shooting environment. Wow, yeah. 